this video is covering making a prediction from a bivariate data plot. So for a start we're going to use our model to make a prediction. We need to make sure that we've got uh, units and sensible rounding. Uh, for merit we're going to create a prediction interval. And for excellence there's two different things we could do. So we could um, reflect on the precision of that prediction or we could look at the relevance of the prediction, so what that prediction could be used for. So going to the first example, we've got athletes weight versus their height. So we want to use a model to make a prediction. So we're going to look at, we're going to make a prediction, sorry, um, if an athlete had a height of 180 centimetres, what would we predict their weight to be? So the model is just the model, is this the equation of the line of best fit? and we're going to use that equation and we're going to substitute in the 180. So we're going to use all the precision of the model. So we've got 1.1171 times the 180 minus the 126.19 and that's going to give us 71.89. So we need to show that working when we do that. And that's going to tell us that for an athlete that is 180 centimeters tall, we can predict that their weight will be approximately 72 kilos. So we can't say that it's going to be 71.89 because our graph's just not going to give us that much accuracy. We can say that it's approximately 72 kilos. So the units, which is kilos, and the sensible rounding is important. For merit, we want to do a prediction interval. So for a start, we're going to draw two confidence lines on here. So what we would like to see is just two lines um, following the line of best fit that should encompass most of the data. So we want to have around about 90 to 95 percent of the data within those lines. So we've got 200 values on this uh, data plot so we don't want to see any more than about 20 values outside but it's only approximate. We just want to have most of the data within those two lines. Then we're going to draw a line up from the 180 and then we can draw across from the bottom and that's going to around about the 60 kilos and across from the top and that's about 88 kilos. So what we can say is we can't be completely certain about this prediction, the 72 kilos, but we can be reasonably confident that the athlete's weight will be between 60 to 88 kilos. So we've just drawn our two confidence lines that encompass most of the data and then we're reading off the graph the 60 and the 88. So it's only approximate and it just it just gives us a range of values that we could expect um, the weight to be for an athlete of that height. For excellence we want to reflect on the precision of those um, predictions. So we're looking at the scatter and the strength at that uh, 180 centimeters and we want to think about how good is this prediction interval. So we can see there's a few points outside of the prediction interval. So what's causing that? Should our prediction interval be bigger? What sort of variables aren't we considering? Or what, what variables are, are causing the variation in weight? Um, so that's reflecting on the precision of our interval. Or we can think about the relevance. So what is this prediction going to be used for? Who would be interested in it? What could we do with this prediction? So the next thing I'm going to do, we're going to do one more example, but the next one's going to be on Word. So this graph is showing car price versus weight. And so I'm doing it on Word, so uh, this is one way you could do it. Another way would be to use paint. But we're going to draw the two confidence lines for a start. So insert, and then we want to go to shapes, and we want to go to lines. And then we can just draw our line on. We want to probably change the weight of the line so it's a bit thicker. We probably want to make a dashed line as well. But the, it's your preference. Then we'll move and we'll create the second uh, confidence line. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to incorporate most of the data. So for this plot we've got 92 data points, so we don't want to see any more than about 9 outside. I just had a quick count and I saw there's about 11 outside, but that's okay. Then we want to draw where 
we're wanting to look at the weight of a car that's 1300 kilos so we want to draw a line so insert shape line and I'm going to draw that up from the 1300 we will change the color of that I'll make it red and I'll draw the dashes and I'll make it a bit thicker and so we'll just copy this one across draw that across to there and draw it to there so what we've done is we've drawn the confidence lines we've drawn the line up from 1300 and we've taken the upper limit and the lower limit within where most of the data is going to be so let's go back to the question so for a car that has a weight of 1300 kilos we're going to predict it'll have a weight of now let's just use the equation for the line of best fit so I've just quickly typed in the line of best fit we've times it by the 1300 which is the weight and that's given us 19.1378 so we can see this is the price but it's in thousands of dollars so I'm going to expect that if the car weighed 1300 kilos the price will have a price of US dollars and it'll be around about 19,000 however we can't be completely certain in our prediction but we can be reasonably confident that the car will have a price between I'd say that's around about 12,000 US dollars and if we look at the top there it's around about 27,000 US dollars so that's complete for merit for excellence we want to look at how good our confidence interval is going to be so looking at the scatter and the strength near the 1300 kilos and thinking about what variables may be affecting the variability of price at that 1300 kilos and again we've got a few dots outside of our confidence lines so why are those variables or sorry why are those observations up there um, is our confidence interval good or should we continue it the last thing we could do is ask what could this prediction be used for so would a car manufacturer be interested in our prediction um, who what other people or who else would be interested in this prediction and what might they uh, want to use it for hopefully that gives you some information to go on uh, good luck with the assessment